what's going on everybody welcome to another episode of the touchdown with doug smith as we continue on our world famous 2024 nfl draft prospect series ladies and gentlemen i'm bringing on one of the most dangerous defensive backs in this year's nfl draft that not only is he one of the best in the pac 12 but quarterbacks don't even want to throw his way because they know what time it is ladies and gentlemen coming out of washington state the washington state cougars cam lampkin cam how are you today man good man how you doing Oh, bless, brother. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Yes, I appreciate you. Absolutely, man. Congrats on all your college success. You have declared for the NFL draft, and good God almighty, I hope you land on my team. I'm just a fan of you, bro. I really am, man. Uh, I appreciate that, man. Sure, much love to you. Yes, sir, man. Appreciate it, man. I, I read online you're, you're you're a Texas native. Is that right? True. True. Okay, M- Mesquite, Texas. Is that right? Yes, sir. Cool, man. Dude, take us from the beginning. When did you first fall in love with the game of football? Um, so I was I was four years old when I first started. Uh, I was living with my grandma at the time. Uh, it was in Terrell, Texas. Terrell, Texas, probably like uh, it's probably like fifteen minutes from Mesquite. Uh, I was living out there with my grandma. Uh, then I think I was like four years old, and my grandma was like, "You want to play football?" And I was like, "You know, like why not? Like you know, why not?" Going, I had a lot of energy as a as a kid, so it's just like you know, I think football would be a thing. So I, I remember if I was four years old, I didn't even play flag football. I was straight in the tackle football at four years old. So, I mean, I kind of, I like the, I like the, you know, to get dirty, the running around, the hitting people. So it was, it kind of like, it just became a thing for me for real. That's amazing, man. And I was watching your high school tape. Like I, I did a little deep dive on you, man. And you are a dope receiver, man. You are really good, man. <laughs> Talk to me about that transition from high school going into college, and, and when did you fall in love with the defensive back position? Uh, I wasn't even playing defense for real like that. Uh, high school, I played a little defense. I probably played uh, probably like four games for real as actual corner. I was playing offense. Um, I was just a, I just thought I was an offensive guy. I didn't understand the, the coverages. I didn't understand how like you know how stuff supposed to work on the defensive side. Yeah. So as I was you no know, going through my my senior year, and I, I had um, got to Utah State. And once I got to Utah State, it was just like, yeah, man, like, you ever thought about playing corner? I was like, no, nah, like, I, I just never done it. I never backpedaled, never threw a punch. Like, I never done none of that. So, so I was like, oh, yeah, I'll try. Like, you know, I'm an athlete. So I got in, and it kind of took off from there. Like, I, I knew I was good at it, but I didn't. I wasn't confident in it, if that makes sense. So, yeah. Yeah. That's dope, man. That's so cool, man. I uh, I think what's what's great about your story and it shows in the way you play the game. It looks like you've been playing DB your whole life. It looks like you've been playing DB since you were four. But you you played offense, right? So you have you know what they're going to take and do, and you dominated on the other side of the ball as well too. So I think that's benefited you a lot as well. Um, now I was watching one of your, uh, I believe it was one of your spring camp uh, uh, videos that you did for Washington State. And he, you had ranked yourself as a number one trash talker in the team. Is that right? True. Yeah. I, yes, definitely. I definitely believe that. I definitely believe that. That's dope, man. You know what's great? Because I, I get annoyed when guys talk trash and then they can't back it up on the field. And you back it up, my friend. Um, do you feel any additional pressure sometimes when you're like, oh, yeah, man, we're, we're, we're kind of chirping a little bit. Do you ever feel any pressure at all? Or? Uh, No, not really. I think I think I'm just a natural trash talker, like, even yeah. off the field, like with my friends, you know, with with my even, even with my mom, like sometimes we trash talk each other. But that's just kind of like that's just kind of like how I was bred, like you know, because I got four, bro- I got three brothers, and we all, you know, we all used to live in my mom's house. So that's kind of been a thing, like come home, talk trash, go outside, play football about it. Like <laughs> you can't talk trash and not play football about it. Or you can't, you know what I'm saying? So we kind of yeah. put trash talking to the test. Like, you gonna trash talk? You gotta go ahead and show somebody. So. That's kind of my mentality. Man, it's so tough not to talk trash sometimes, man. As I played football and even one year of college too. And I always looked at guys like Barry Sanders. I'm like, man, like, and God bless you, man. Like, I, he didn't say nothing, man. He just <laughs> quiet, man, but just so much testosterone in me, man. I can't help but say something, man. You know? <laughs> That's how I be. I, I can't help it to not say anything. This is this is how I am, you know. So yeah, absolutely, okay. man. What are some of the things that left you uh, that, that ultimately had you choose in Washington State uh, to go play college ball at? Uh, so I transferred. I, I went from uh, Utah State to Washington State from 2019 to 2021. So I had um, I made the transition from receiver to corner, and then you know I was I was still getting my feet where I didn't really understand. And then 2021 came around, and I realized that like 
I was like, I'm actually good at this. So, you know, I worked at it. I got bigger. I got stronger. And it's just like the stuff that I was imagining, like in my head, like I can do this stuff. And then it was just like a, it was just like a click. Like right when we, like right when the 2021 season ended, my coach had left. My corners coach had left from uh, Utah State. He went to Washington State. Oh, crazy! Like, like you can't just leave me like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. There's a relationship that's built, man. It's a shit thing. I was like, you can't just leave me like that. So I was like, I'm gonna test my luck. Like, you know, I've always been that person. Like, people always counted me out. I was too small. You know, I wasn't the biggest, but I was like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like this, and I've been, you know, and I've been like this. So, like, why not go and test my luck on the biggest stage to have people actually see me now? You know, because a lot of people don't know who I am still, like to this day. I'm here to make sure that people understand, like, like Cam is here, like Clamp is here, like this, this is what I do, like you know what I'm saying. So, I just got a mentality for it, like I just built the, I built the actual like, like, a, like a mentality for it. But I can also say that I built the mindset to like to show anybody else or show other people, like you know, you may not be the biggest, you may not be the strongest, but at some point people can't fear a little guy. You know what I'm saying? People can't fear the little guy sometimes. So yeah. I just kind of I just put that in my head to make sure that people fear me. Like when they saw me on the field, you were gonna fear me. So. Man, I love that, dude. I love that. I, I like how you touched up on the relationship between you and your defensive backs coach. For those who don't know, who who was your defensive backs coach that you followed to Washington? Uh, Raymond Brown. He's actually DB coach there now. He's the corners coach there now. Man, Raymond, if you're watching this, what's up, man? Salute to him. Salute to that man. Yes, sir. Absolutely, man. Talk to me, man. You uh, you, you grew up with four brothers. Did your four brothers also play football as well? Or yeah, we all we all play football. My oldest brother went to University of Tulsa. He played nickel at the University of Tulsa. I got a um another brother right now. He's fifteen. He's playing at Cy Fair in Houston, Texas. And I got a younger brother. He playing uh little league football. He's in seven on seven right now, so he he's doing it all. He doing that seven and seven is legit, dude. Yeah, that's it's legit, especially in Texas. It's dude. it's big out there. <laughs> you tell no lies, man. I went with a uh, shout out to Jamani Ford. I went to the Under Armour seven on seven tournament here in San Antonio at UTSA. Mm-hmm. Pulled up and dude, these kids are it, it's so different. You know, I'm 35. I'm a little bit older, man. But Cavs that they one guy, he he mossed it and then he tapped the dude's head and said, you're too small. Oh, like, bro, it's, it's crazy. We wouldn't I quit seven, <laughs> I played seven on seven. And we wasn't doing stuff like that. We were just talking crazy to each other. But to actually tap someone on the head, is- <laughs> dude, the, the trash talking. You know, we didn't start. I didn't start really trash talking to probably like sophomore, junior year of high school. I'm like, oh, this is cool. Well, To's doing it. I can do it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> obviously, he's a much better football player than I was. But <laughs> man, what are um? You, you have such a charisma about you. You're you're a great locker room guy. You're a great person off the field and a fantastic football player. What are some of the things that motivate you in life? Really, my my brothers. I got my brothers tatted on me. My brothers' names right here. Yeah. But it's just like, man, I just, I just, I just think about my brothers when I'm doing stuff. It's like, man, we was at a point in our life to where it's just like, we didn't understand like what was gonna be next. We didn't know if we were going to school the next day. Who we gonna eat the next day? Like, are we gonna have clean clothes for the next day? Like, it was just, we just had a lot of stuff going on, and my brothers was always there. It just seemed like whenever I felt like I needed someone, like they was always calling, good, bro, like. Like what you need, like everything all right with you. Even my younger brothers, they they way younger than me, but they always call me. So big bro, like, are you good? Like, yeah, when you come home, when are you coming home? Like they always want to see me when I come home. When you come home, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, let's go train. Like so I, I think that give me a lot of motivation because I want to see my younger brothers actually do better than me. I'm I want to be the one to set the standard. My big brother set the standard and I passed him. So I'm gonna set the bar as high as I can to make sure that my little bros, you know, set the bar as high as they can. So you know, it's just a, it's just a thing. I want, I want to build wealth for those guys, and they can build wealth for themselves. You know, their kids. You know, you know, just keep the generation going. Cause you know, like like I said before, we didn't have anything ten years ago. Like ten years ago, we were almost homeless for real. So, I think this is something that I I take serious. Like I I really want to do this. This is something that I've been looking to do for, since I was four years old for real. So, yeah, this is this is one of those. Dude, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that with me, man. And uh, I- I'm glad to see that y'all are doing well, man. Um, I was home a senior year of high school, like for a whole school year, dude. And I was sleeping in Burger Kings. And it was, yeah, yeah. man. It's it's a scary feeling, man, when you're going through those kind of things, man, you know. For real. Like, just just knowing, just not knowing what's going to happen next is like the scariest part of it. But yeah, 
I use I use a saying. I I I made my little brother start here, and we always say just stay down. Like stay down is kind of our, our little family thing. So like we already mm-hmm. know when stuff start going bad, and, and everyone's starting to get upset. People starting to get hostile and get rowdy. So just stay down. Just wait on it. Just let everything fall in place. Cause we ain't got that much longer until we reap the benefits of what I we were saying we've been working on for all our life. Yeah. So, still going. We still in the stay down process. We still in the process of you know we ain't rushing anything. We're not trying to you know we're basically not just we're basically not trying to do anything that's gonna mess up the process that we've been having for so yeah. long. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's beautiful, man. Thank you for sharing that with me, man. And it's what's dope about you, man. You you're uh you're the oldest brother. I take it right. Uh, I'm a second oldest. Second, you know, all all, all four of y'all are, are, are destroying uh, family curses that get passed down a, a lot of the times, man. And, and it's not always something bad in the home. It could be poverty, it could be uh, health, it could be a multitude of things. But you are, man, in the name of Jesus, man, you are crushing it, man. You are crushing it. Keep, keep up the great work, man. For real. Um, bringing it back to football, man. I want to ask you, man, who are some defensive backs who you model your game after? I like I like Jalen Ramsey. I like the trash talk by Jalen. That's why I get most of the trash talk from. Yeah. Um, I like Stephon Gilmore. I've been watching Stephon Gilmore since since he was at South Carolina. So I've been I've been watching yeah. him. And um, my last one, I don't really have a lot. Hopefully, it's myself. You know, I want to be yeah. the, that people look up to. They can say, "Well, I like him. I like how he played his game." So, you know, I just want the like the trash talk is a, is a part of my game so i listen i watch Jalen Ramsey i watch how he moves i watch the stuff that he that he you know like this type of stuff that he goes about you know and i'll say another one, i probably say Trevon Diggs too i'm a i'm a i'm a cowboys fan i watch Diggs a lot so i like i like i like Diggs you know yeah Diggs is dope man he's so dope i see his growth man and uh i know he'll come back healthy and stronger than ever it sucks he got injured but he's such a dog man for real Definitely. that man a dog yeah, it's it, Cowboys, man. Like I can't even crack jokes. Uh, they can, they're a legit Super Bowl contender, legit this year. They're 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 looking good. They're the defense and they have depth. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking a- NFC Championship at minimum for the Cowboys, but it's uh, it's tough. Any given Sunday, right? <laughs> Any given Sunday, you never know what happens. So. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Um, you're a very, very special player, man. You got a cool nickname, man. Tell the for, for the folks who have never heard of you, but they just subscribed to my channel and they love watching the draft content and stuff. Tell people how you got your nickname and what it means to you. So, um, so I got the nickname from actually I got the nickname from Utah State when I first moved to Corner. Like I said, when I first moved to Corner, we was in a meeting room and I wrote my name and I just wrote C Lamp. So, mm-hmm. and I turned it in, and then like one of the older guys named DJ Williams, he actually um he's a corners coach at Northern Colorado. I played with him, yeah. so he was like, "Hey, bro," like he was like, "This he was like, who is Clamp?" And I was like, "Like who is?" That? I'm like, "I'm saying the same thing. Like who is that? Like what do y'all mean?" He was like, "Oh, it's C Lamp," and uh-huh. I was like, "Wait a minute, like did y'all just make that up?" Like I didn't even know like like what was going on at this point, and I was like. Oh man, we're just gonna start calling you Clamp. So like every day I was getting called Clamping. Uh-huh. Clampington. Like it was just a whole bunch of stuff. And I was like, I'm gonna just keep the name Clamp. Cause it, it kind of goes, it goes with the playing corner. My first name is Cam, last name's Lamp. Kind of goes together. So I was like, I'll, I'll keep it. So yeah. I developed and Clamp. <laughs> well, hey man, you're oh. you're you're the definition of a lockdown corner, man. Like if if there's two seconds on the clock and I'm a receiver on the 10 yard line, I hope you don't line up against me, man. Like you're, you're that guy, man. You're that you're, you're him as they say, as the young folks say these days. <laughs> <laughs> Question, man. What, what are some of your favorite defensive packages, man, that you like to, that, that you feel uh, bring out some of your best qualities? Uh, I think nickel. I think nickel bring out the best just because I know like if I can, if, if I can turn the next person up that's next to me, I feel like it'll just it'll just go on like the rest of the field. But I think the back end for me is like something that I take pride in. Cause you know, the front seven, I can't control the front seven because I don't I don't play in the box. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. On the back end, I feel like I can control that because I can be the one that brings the energy. Or I can be the one that rouses this person up. You make a play, I'm motivated to go make a play. You you got a PBU, I'm motivated to go get a you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I feel like but in, in the nickel is just a lot of people who are just like me, talk trash, who can move, who can cover. So we just it's just a lot of us out there. I think the nickel is, is probably my my favorite. 
man i love that i love that now draft day comes and when your name is called whether it be day one two three udfa or somewhere in between there man um man what are some of your goals year one in the nfl uh year one i want to actually i want to get on a team i think i'm gonna start small because i don't want to just go in and expect something like oh i want to get in and start and have six picks and you know all that, that that's, that's not realistic you know what I'm saying? that's not realistic in the nfl because you never know where your life is going to happen, you know, day two a uh, camp, day three a camp, day four a camp. I wanted to come in, work, solidify myself a spot. Once I solidify a spot, then we get the work from there. But right now I'm just focused on making a roster. Like, that's kind of my, that's just my mentality right now. Because I know once I get there, oh, plays is going to happen. I'm going to make plays. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to lock people up. We're going to do all that. I need a platform if that makes sense. I just need somewhere to start. So that's kind of my yeah. man. I love it. And there's a lot of teams that need defensive backs. Yeah. <laughs> Miami Dolphins. You know, we 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 need we need that <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Question, man. Uh training, man. How how is your training going so far? Where you're training at and what are you doing to take your skills to the next level, man? Uh I'm training at, uh, I'm actually training out here in Miami, Florida. I'm training at uh Bomberitos with uh okay. Coach Pete. Coach Pete at Bomberitos, great guy. Yeah. Um, I love the work out here. Man, it's it's uh it's some stuff that I've never done before. I never really um I never really worked on my body in certain ways to where like I'm way more flexible. I'm way more bendy. Like me being flexible is crazy. Like yeah. I'm a, a fast guy and he's flexible is is outrageous. But it's like yeah. getting way stronger. I'm I'm stronger than I was leaving Washington State. I'm way stronger. It's only week two, so I'm. I'm <laughs> I'm just I'm just waiting to, to see what the benefits gonna look like, you know, in eight weeks. So yeah. I'm I love it over here. I love the Miami weather too. It's it. oh, man, it's the best. It's the best in the world. <laughs> I'm gonna retire in Miami one day. I don't know. I'll I'll get it. I I won't even need a spray tan. I just use the sun as my tan. It'll be great. <laughs> have any food spots that you got a chance to try out there in Miami yet? Uh I tried this food spot called Mad Chicken. That was a good one. I like Mad Chicken. Okay. Um, they said something about going to um, it's like it's called Miami's Best Wings, I think something like that. So mm. I gotta see what that's about. I gotta see what the Miami Best Wings. Are. I'm a wing guy. My favorite, yeah. my favorite food is wings. I'm not even gonna lie. So I gotta see what the wings talking about. Yeah, South Florida has it all, man. I mean, Latin food, barbecue, wings. I mean, you name it, it's it's there, man. So it's... everything out here. So I love it. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, one of my last questions today, man, um, for NFL teams, NFL scouts watching this interview, as, as many of them do, what's something you want them to know about you that perhaps they may not know already? Um, I'm a hard worker, man. You know, I'm not I'm not the type of guy who who's going to come in looking for stuff that to be given to me. You know, I was never that guy. I came in and I just took whatever was given to me. I came in and said, I'm going to take it. I'm not coming in and asking you guys for anything. So if y'all listen to the NFL scouts, when I come in, I'm not coming in asking for anything. I want to yeah. grind. I want to. I want to earn my. I want to earn everything that I get. So I'm not. I'm not here for y'all to try to babysit me or do none of that. I want what I want, and I'm gonna work to get it. It's kind of that's just where I am. I never had anything coming up, and I'm not expecting you to give me anything right now. So, man, I love it, dude. I love it, Cam, dude clamp man cam clamp lampkin dude i am so happy to have you on the show dude thank you for come on show make yourself vulnerable man sharing a little bit of your story man oftentimes we see the greatness of football players but we don't know the man underneath the helmet man so today we really got a chance to know you man and i really appreciate you sliding on through man yes, sir. i appreciate i appreciate you for having me yeah man absolutely absolutely uh before you go any shout outs man oh yeah uh i want to shout out my mom shout out my mom shout out my brothers Shout out Washington State and stay down and let's do it. Yes, sir. I love it. Love it. Ladies and gentlemen, comment below how this interview made you feel and comment below which team you think you'd be the best fit for. I really, I see 32 teams, man. There's not a team that cannot benefit, cannot not benefit from Cam taking being on the team, man. Um, also, go in the description of this video and you can have all social media stuff, Twitter, Instagram. Give them a follow and get inspired, man. Cam is the man. Cam, thank you so much again, man. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you for watching another episode of The Touchdown with Doug Smith, where we have exclusive NFL content and exclusive NFL interviews. Be sure to hit that like and that subscribe button. Follow us on social media. See you on the next one.